What's up guys? So in this video I'm going to show you a new set of motorcycle wheels that I modeled in CAD. I'm feeling a bit under the weather right now so that is why my voice is scratchy. I'm going to use these wheels on the next custom bike that I'm building. So let's dive in. As you can see, I have Onshape pulled up on my desktop. That's the CAD program that I use. So modeling wheels, I start out with a blank like this, an MSI blank. If you're not familiar with MSI, they're a wheel company um, that offers all different sizes and shapes of wheels for motorcycles. Um, so I'm starting off with a 19 inch OD wheel by a three and a half inch width. So it makes it really nice starting with a blank so you don't have to draw in all of this profile. You know, that's already there for you. Um, it's designed well uh, for the tire to mate up and bead to this surface and for the tube to roll in here if it's a tube tire. Um, it could be a tubeless tire. Let's get to the design portion. So here's the wheel that I've designed. Let's pu pull the tire off of it and get the hubs out of there. And hit that subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this on CAD modeling, fabrication, and other engineering practices. As you can see, it's a five-spoke Y setup. I took my design inspiration from a MotoGP wheel, um, which of course are 17 inch, and I transferred that design to this 19 inch blank that I'm going to use. So I'll show you the wheel a little bit, and then I will unpack the feature list over here on how I actually designed uh, the wheel step by step as far as the modeling process actually went in CAD. So like I said, it's a five spoke Y setup, and you can see um, I removed material on the faces of the spokes and extruded it in and then filleted this pocket out to and that serves a couple purposes number one it takes weight away but also most importantly it strengthens the spoke so um, when you i-beam or triangulate uh, a design it'll actually make it much stronger so this design the pocket in it and the fillet and the removed material is actually stronger than if this spoke was just solid material took material away on the face of the spokes and then also on the inside of the spokes I also removed material in here as you can see and radiused all that out and then removed material in the very bottom of the spokes as well so it's pocketed out on the face and the inside of the spokes and that makes a very lightweight strong design so I have the material assigned to this part as 6061 aluminum and let's see what the actual weight is 11.3 pounds alright so for the first step when I started modeling this wheel um, I took the blank and I sketched out the area that I wanted to remove on the inside. Sketched out these two circles and then I extruded that material, basically blew the center of the wheel out. Sketch two, I actually designed the spoke profile, the Y spoke profile. Some of my measurements here, this could all be changed, but as I was playing around, this is kind of the best look um, that I found and also the, the most balanced design. And then I extruded that spoke and made it a solid. And I used what is called a circular pattern. So I took that spoke and I patterned that spoke times five around this center axis. In sketch three, I came in here and made a radius between the spokes to sort of fill material in, the, in this area and then all the way around. I extruded that material just like the spokes. Same thing, I circular patterned this piece around the center axis to fill it in on all five spokes. Next, I did a little filleting on the spokes. As you can see here, I did a 1.5 inch fillet to radius that out a little bit. The next feature here is called a Boolean. I Booleaned all the parts together. And what that is, is you basically just click parts or highlight a section. And as long as they are 
um, adjacent of one another or touching, you can Boolean it together and make it the same part. So I Booleaned all five spokes, the little gussets, the centerpiece, and the rim together to make this one unit. Sketch four, we started drawing in the design that we're actually going to remove material on the spokes like I showed you in the beginning. So you can see how I drew in these lines and these little radiuses at the end of the spokes and basically made this area that we're gonna highlight and remove material. So instead of drawing in all these individual lines, there is tools where you can just click the border and it will draw in a line offset to that border a little bit. And it makes your life a lot easier. Circular patterned that sketch. Uh, to all five spokes so I had that exact same sketch on all five spokes so I could highlight and remove that material. I highlighted the sketches on the spokes and I removed the material with an extrude remove tool. So I removed 0.275 of depth. I'm just starting to fill it in some of the other areas like the spokes here where they meet the rim. I did a 0.375 so a 3 8 fill it. Out the feature list over here on the left you can see I just did a ton of different filleting so I'll show you some of this but I'm not going to show you every one but I went in and filleted everything and it's like a this is a 0.15 fillet on the inside of the pockets here and then you can see that I also filleted the top side which this is a 0.05 fillet. This is a good one here um, so I can show you guys what a variable fillet is. So a variable fillet is where you want to take one sharp edge and do various uh, filleting of different sizes on that same edge. So I'll show you what I mean. So up front here on this top edge, we have a 0.05 fillet, just a real tight radius, just like its neighbor over here in this spoke pocket. But as we get down towards the rim, I want this fillet to be larger down here. So you can see that it's 0.5 all through here and then it gets larger and I to a 0.25 fillet down by the rim. Pocketing back here on the inside of the spokes uh, where I took material away and kind of um, I beamed the back side of the spoke for strength and weight purposes. So I started off with a drawing. I think that was like sketch eight. Yes, correct. View normal to sketch plane. Okay, so this is going to be a little tricky for you to see, but what I did is I came in here and I drew lines on where I wanted to actually take that material away. So you can see my line profile here. I drew in this line. So it comes to the edge of the spoke out here where that pocketing kind of dissipates and then it gets deeper into um, the spoke in, in these areas. So I'm actually taking about an eighth inch of material away from the surface here and then I grab this area, I highlight this area and I actually um, extrude remove material um, symmetrically through here. So I think I removed like three eighths of material and I'll show you what I mean here. So we'll go to the extrude and you can see how I did that. So I extruded or I removed three eighths um, worth of material on the inside of the spokes here symmetrically. And then you can see how that pocket started. These are just square edges here. Um, of course, I filleted them later to radius all of this out. But you can see how I took that material away by making this drawing and then extruding, removing material on the inside. And then, of course, I did my circular pattern just like before. Basically, what I did here, what sketch is this? Sketch 7. So I basically had the hub on the model and I highlighted these bolt holes and highlighted them onto the wheel and then grabbed each one and removed the material all the way through. That's a very simple feature. 
that's pretty much it. A lot of this CAD stuff is simpler than one might actually think once you get to know the program a little bit and you know what you're doing and you've spent the proper time practicing and educating yourself. But the actual uh, process to make some of these parts isn't that complicated. So and that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.